Lord, teach me your statutes. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say immediately that it's going to rain, and so it does. And when you notice that the wind is blowing from the south, you say that it's going to be hot, and so it is. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? If you're to go with your opponent before a magistrate, make an effort to settle the matter on the way. Otherwise, your opponent will turn you over to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the constable, and the constable throw you into prison. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Paul is expressing seemingly his frustration at not being able to do what he would think and judge to be the best course of action. In other words, his weakness was getting him down. And really, in our own struggle to do God's will, we must come to realize and understand that it's God's grace that will get us where we're going. We need to die to ourselves. In fact, in one place, Paul says, it is in our weakness that we are made strong. But what's interesting in the Greek language, the word weakness isn't really weakness as such, it's in our unstrength we are made strong. In other words, it's when we allow God to take possession of our life. And that's hard. It's hard to die to ourself. It's hard to really trust God enough or be attentive to not enough to recognize the truth and the beauty of God's teachings. The, psalm, the psalmist says, Lord, teach me your statutes. It's not easy for us to be led by God. And yet, if we really find out and come to the point where we can trust God and we choose to trust God and we do our best to understand and know what God teaches through his church and all the rest, and we do our best to put that into practice, our life is going to be really good. And people are really going to like us because we're generous, we're patient, we're calm, we have understanding, we accrue wisdom. All those gifts of the Holy Spirit are there and it will make us an amiable person. We'll be what God intended us to be. And yet we're fragile, weak human beings. And if we can truly recognize and be humble enough and meek enough in the full sense of that word, we will know God's teaching and we will use all our strength and all our energy to live it out in our own lives and to reveal it to others through our example to them. In the gospel, Jesus is talking about, and this is to the crowds, it's one of those rare times where Jesus is admonishing not only the Pharisees 
and the Sadducees, but he's admonishing the crowds. He's saying, you can read the signs of the weather. Why can't you read the signs of the time? And the only way that we can hope to have any vision or clarity in such things is by being very attentive to the voice within our hearts. You know, to really test our beliefs and figure out, will they really lead to human thriving? Not will they meet an immediate need of mine and make me feel good for a moment, but will they truly serve the common good, my own health, my own well-being? I mean, think of how great it would be if, if in, in my own life, if I could just discipline myself enough to eat less and to really eat only those things that are really good for me. I try to do this, and I, to some degree, I'm somewhat successful, but not successful to the degree I would like to be. And I've come to realize that it's only through God's grace that I can do these things. But do I really allow myself to let God dwell within and take control of my life, my strength, my will, all these things. Paul tells us it's really hard. It's really difficult. But we have a God who's infinitely patient with us. And so we just get up again and keep trying and challenge ourselves to do our best to see the face of Christ in everyone that we meet. Last week, they kicked off stage one of the synod on the synods, on synodality. A lot of talk, a lot of people are worried and concerned. And what we need to do is we need to try and get engaged as best we can and let really truly the sense of the faithful speak. Now the sense of the faithful are not people who said, yeah, I'm a Catholic. Well, do you go to Mass? Do you follow the teachings on natural family planning? Do you oppose abortion? Do you really recognize the true, the good, and the beautiful? Or do you see kind of the name Catholic as just a social club or a place to gather or even a place to do really good work for the poor, to really work hard at environmental concerns those are all good things, but those are material things. And we have an obligation to take care of our environment. We have a, an obligation to, to listen to people and do the right thing. But is our heart focused on eternal things? Do we understand the primary issue of saving souls, of getting people to love their neighbor more than themselves, to love God more than things? We need those people who are what is known as the remnant or the little ones. In Hebrew, the anawim. This is the preferential of the poor that is so evident in the church. The church puts a priority on those people who look towards God with a purity of heart, with a sincerity of heart, who really want to serve what is true, good, and beautiful, even when they don't know it. But if poverty leads people to despair and violence and anger and frustration, we need to do what we can to help those people and, and let them experience the healing power of God in their hearts to where they can be open to the true, the good, and the beautiful. So my brothers and sisters, on this Feast of St. John Paul II, we just thank God for his ministry on what he did in working with uh, actually Ronald Reagan in, in really bringing down communism in a significant way. And his words are words to live by. Do you know what the first thing he said in his pontificate? The first recorded words when he came out on that balcony and welcomed the world as this Polish pope. There hadn't been a non-Italian pope for hundreds of years, I think. He said simply, be not afraid. And those are words to live by today, too. Be not afraid. When we put Christ first, when we trust the Lord, we need not fear anything, not the pandemic, 
not disease, not sickness, and dare I say, not even death. Because we are born to live forever. And if we set our mind and our hearts on these things, we indeed will help the world recognize the truth of the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand as we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For Thomas Keller, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. That all corruption in our world be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for this synodal process, that it truly will reveal and uncover the sense of the faithful, those who truly put their faith and trust in God and eternal things, and not only those who are blinded by material things. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 